Good day, folks. Greg Budd from Bud's Baits here. Welcome to the African Lure Craftsman. In the ensuing episodes, we'll be taking you along while we design and handcraft timber lures and hopefully get out into the water to use them. I've designed lures for some of the big boys in the industry and I sell my lures worldwide. I'll do my best to show you some of the hacks I've learned along the way. Stay with us and experience the wonders of casting lures to bass, giant catfish, tigerfish in Zimbabwe, which I'm fortunate to call my home, and cross borders with us as we'll target the denizens of the deep all along the African coast in magical places such as Mozambique. Through it all, I'll share a bit of my daily life and business experience, which can be quite tough in Zimbabwe at times, as we take you along to run the daily gauntlet of survival. Subscribe and click the notifications button to stay with us. Often comments come up about painting on foil, and to be honest, there's actually nothing that sticks to foil properly, but there's a couple of processes you can use that are going to make your adhesion a lot better. Uh, we've already been through the process of 2K'ing the foil. Um, we've done the 2K on top of a detailed uh, texture, which also helps uh, the the paint or the clear coat adhere to it. Um, and what I like to do often, as you've seen in other videos, is use textured things like sandpaper to create texture on the gills, around the eye, on the body, on the fins maybe. And that all will help uh, in adhesion as well. Obviously, the other point is keeping the foil clean. Uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean the foil before you paint it. Uh, gets rid of any uh, foreign matter, any grease from your fingertips, anything like that. And um, will certainly help again with the adhesion. Uh, very necessary to try and touch the lure as little as possible. Uh, and during the washing process, which you're about to see, you'll notice that we clean it, uh, we dry it thoroughly, and we try not to touch the lure between that phase and the initial clear coat phase. Okay guys, so what we've done here is we've now foiled and detailed these lures and we are now ready for the 2K clear coat stage. And before we do that, we've got to make sure these are thoroughly clean. Um, and how I do that is uh, with hot water and uh, dishwashing liquid. Be very careful not to scratch the lures because the foil does take scratches very easily. But I'll show you how that's done. I've pre-boiled the kettle here. And we put in some hot water, not much, a bit of dishwasher. Get some cold in there. You don't want the water too hot so as that it melts the glue behind the foil because then it becomes very tacky and it starts seeping out the edges. So once this is hot to touch but not boiling, which is there, we are done. And a very simple process, no rings, no big calluses, which can be a problem with some people. Just get the lure inside there, soap it up, and rub it very, very firmly with your palms on the sides, and you'll see they actually polish up nicely as well. And get any possible contamination, grease, anything off there. Done, a little bit of a rinse in cold water. And back on the board, onto the next guy. Just run through the process. This is actually just three of a, a much bigger order of this particular lure. So we'll just get those done. These are done, and they'll go through a final rinse again, which I'll show you. Give them a good dry, and they're ready for a 2K clear coat. Okay. Another process we've got to do to make sure now all the soap is off is give it a final hot rinse. Again, don't want it too hot. Get some cold in there. And once that's done, you don't want to touch those at all, other than drying them. But you encase them in a cloth and you dry them. You don't want to actually touch them at all. So the reason you can't touch these is because any contaminants uh, under, underlying the 2K 
might cause de uh, delamination. And I've had that before. You'll have one little spot where it's had a, a bit of grease from your finger, tip of fingerprint, anything like that. And that's the place that starts delaminating. So we're going to give these another rinse quickly. Get everything off. So, and that is quite hot. I mean, I could have a cup of tea almost to that, but not quite. I wouldn't be complaining. But, yeah, so it is quite warm. But we'll get rid of anything like that. Obviously, my hands in the same water have very clean for now. But after this process, I won't be touching these lures until the 2K is dry on them. And there we go, done. Polished up quite nicely, ready to dry. Okay, so now we're drying them and you'll notice I'm only touching the wires. Give them a thorough dry in the eye sockets. Once you've done that, not touching them again, get them onto your wire hanger. Put them somewhere they can't get contaminated. Again. This cloth, by the way, looks a bit tatty, but it gets washed a couple, a couple of times every week, and this is its only job. So you've probably noticed during these tutorials and the last few videos we've done that I've been actually touching the lures quite a few times. Something I don't do with my production lures, and unfortunately it's a little bit necessary just to get the right angles. But uh, once the lure has been cleaned and gone through the cleaning process, um, everything will be hanging on wires. Uh, I think you've seen in the previous videos, I have my lures on little pieces of bent fencing wire, which I always use, and I always have things at hand like a lintless cloth that I can wipe down with. Um, obviously, the less you touch them, the better, because um, any foreign matter will start some sort of uh, process of delamination, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we have the primed and white coated lure, and we have that foiled over. We have a 2K layer over that, all during which we try not to touch the lure and we keep it clean. Then we layer the colors, and finally we'll coat it in a minimum of three coats of tarbender epoxy. That encasement of the lure generally keeps, keeps the product as a durable product. Um, and only if maybe once in a while it's smashed against a rock or something like that and you get a crack, then it might start to chip or something like that. But generally in all the years of fishing I've done and with clients fishing them, we've hardly ever had a lure really disintegrate or come apart. Most are quite durable. You do get surface scratches, of course, with big toothy critters, wahoo, mackerel, things like that, dog tooth tuna. But uh, generally that process will keep your lure durable.